and uh, improve the returns. We will urge our trustees to pay more attention to this part. That ends the oral questions. Government motions. At the meeting of the 25th of October 2017, this council already commenced the motion debate on taking forward the follow-up task of the co-location arrangement at the West Kowloon Station of the Guangzhou Shenzhen Hong Kong Express Rail Link. During the debate, Honorable Claudia Mo moved a motion under Rule 40 Bracket 1 of the Rules of Procedures that the debate be now adjourned. This council now continues with the debate on the adjournment motion. Mr. Eddie G. Madam Deputy, do we have a quorum here? No. Call for quorum. Mr. Adi G calls for quorum.
also taught me that CJ is the
朱海迪议员。Mr. Eddie G. Madam Deputy, fellow members, why did you leave so soon after having lunch? I'm going to speak on this motion to adjourn the debate. I would like to say something about the picture. Yesterday was Halloween. I noticed that the DAB has come up with this picture. And it asks a question of who is human being, who is a ghost. Well, it is clear for everyone to see. So apart from myself here down at the bottom, uh, Tanya Chan is also featured. That can be seen while she raised her hand. Who is a human being, who is a ghost? You can't tell right away from um, looking through this picture. I think I am a human being being burned by the DAB. I was tortured by this fire. Maybe a lot of members of the public have this feeling that they are being tortured. At the collocation arrangement at West Cowden Station, uh, well, th it seems that it will be forced through very hastily. I don't think we can tell right away who is a human being, who is a ghost. And it's a matter of opinion, I think. For the proposed uh, or the motion on the co-location arrangement at WKS, I would like to explain why I support the motion moved by Ms. Claudia Mo to adjourn the debate. Whenever the DAB uh, See, so this uh, an adjournment motion. They will say that, um, uh, well, let's not have the motion debate on adjournment motion. Just have a debate, and then we can vote on it. And they keep saying, just put it to a vote. Why do you, you propose a motion to adjourn? Well, I would like to uh, tell you a distinction. First, if a motion is very clear. And there are no uncertain legal points. There will be reason if you ask me to go straight to the motion. Of course, uh, pen Democrats uh, will not just do what you tell them to do. We will uh, not go down without um, putting up a fight. However, if there are uncertainties in legal points and if the project under discussion is not mature, a responsible way to deal with it is to support a motion to adjourn. Since 1998, when the first uh, LegCo was formed after the reunification, there are a number of occasions showing that if the content of a motion is seen to contravene uh, Hong Kong laws or um, PRC constitutions or before the court has made a, um, a ruling, it will not proceed. In May 2007, Mr. Leung Kwok moved a motion about um, June 4th. He asked in the motion to end the one-party rule, and at that time, uh, Mrs. Rita Fan made a ruling. It says that, uh, well, under Article 31 of the Basic Law, um, the LegCo is an is a leg is the legislature formed under the Basic Law, and if there is a motion asking for the end of a one-party rule. then it will not be in order. And back in 2004, also in May, also at the time when Mrs. Rita Fan was the president, it was Mr. Lee Chuck Yen's motion about the June rally. 
June rally motion took place every year, but at that year, um, no. Well, the uh, no objection notice for the rally has not had not been obtained yet. So, in the minds of Rita Fan, the legality of this motion is doubtful. Therefore, this motion should not be debated in Lechko. The third example, it was in 2008, also at the time when Mrs. Rita Fan was president. It was a motion. Uh, it was an amendment by Mr. Ronnie Tong to another amendment to a motion. It was in relation to a judicial review case. Mrs. Fan said that Mr. Ronnie Tong's amendment um, tries to predict or expect the court to make a ruling when the court has not actually made one. Mr. Ju, if you doubt the legality of um, collocation arrangements, you need to raise this point in the um, debate proper of that motion. Now you should focus on the motion to adjourn. Thank you for the reminder. I was going to say that, um, well, we try to, we need to stick Take a step backward. Yes, uh, the president has already ruled that we can discuss it, but members should understand history, convention, and past rulings so that when they vote on the motion to adjourn, there will be a basis. The three examples. Are not um, agreeable to me. It's just that uh, I want to adopt the same standard on the motion on collocation arrangements. It has not gone beyond Mr. Leung Kwok Hong's motion in 2007 to ask for the end of a one party rule. But it's of the same level. Let me give you another three examples first. Article 20 of the Basic Law. Um, well, this is a three step process related to the three step process announced in the 25th of July this year. It says in the announcement that Article 20 served as a basis, and the Secretary for Justice said that under Article 20, this will give um, the administration power to do this. However, lawyers said that Article the use of Article 20 will conflict to Article 18 because Article 20 talks about granting of powers, but by Granting such power, uh, an area in Hong Kong will not be protected under Article 18. This is the first step of the three-step process. That is, um, for the mainland and the Hong Kong SAR to reach an agreement. Perhaps there will be a more elaborate ex explanation at step two, but at this stage, we don't know what it is. So the conflict or contradiction between Articles 18 and 20 has not been resolved. And in the paper dated 25th of July in relation to the three-step process, it says that, well, uh, when a decision is made under Article 20, that means West Kowloon Station, part of it, will not be uh, Hong Kong territory. So it generates another conflict. Is a conflict with Article 7, 
because it says under Article 7 that the land and natural resources within Hong Kong SAR shall be state property. The government shall be responsible for the management, use and development for their lease or grant to individuals, etc. If you say that it is not Hong Kong territory anymore, and in the same breath, the Hong Kong SARG will have to lease it out under Article 7. So it doesn't make sense. It's no longer Hong Kong territory. However, you have to invoke Article 7 to lease it out. Well, if Article 7 applies, then why doesn't Article 18 apply? The third conflict. Mr. Chu, you have now moved on to the legality or the constitutionality of co-location arrangements. I understand that one of the reasons for supporting the motion to adjourn is um, the doubt you have on its legality and constitutional constitutionality. It, well, we will have to wait for the a court to dis the court to decide, and I'm going to go into it. Well. A decision may not be made. That is, where the collocation arrangement has contravened the um, fundamental policy direction on Hong Kong by the People's Republic of China. Some people say the court has not made a decision yet. Well, I'd like to say that if a ruling is not yet made by the court, that means we should not discuss it in this council because we don't know what we will be debating about. I'm not going to go into detail about the basic uh, policy direction. You can go back to my first and the second point. Madam Deputy, my point is simple. We have to support the motion to adjourn because the motion proposed by the administration is very immature, especially uh, from the point of law. What will be the effect? It will be like what uh, Mr. Gary Chen said last week, in that uh, he was very immature. He said, words to the effect, and I stand to be corrected, that, uh, well, Pan Democrats wants a separate location or to have the, to have the uh, CIQ procedures in the mainland. But at the same time, Pan Democrats oppose to the XRL. And the reason why you're opposed to the XRL is because you don't want to go to the mainland. And the reason why you don't want to go to the mainland is because you don't like mainland China. Because, and that's because you don't like being Chinese. It reminds me of what uh, Lu Xun said in one of his uh, articles. If you see short sleeve, then you think about um, you think about um, a vest and then sex and then sex organ and then orgy and then and then a uh, illegitimate child. So there is no basis and it's not legally sound. And as a result, there are many allegations that are not founded and there are also speculations jumping from one place to the next. Ms. Cordia Mo's motion to adjourn will take will take let's go out of this conundrum. What the administration should do is to propose an alternative to have clearance procedures done on the mainland and to give us a chance to express our views. I so submit. Mr. Ip Kin Yun. 
I speak in support of Ms. Mo's motion to adjourn under Article under Rule Forty Bracket One. We started the discussion on this motion last week. I have chance to hear what members said, and it gives me an opportunity to reflect on this. Mr. Chu has made a very important point. The discussion itself is immature. I don't mean the proposal of the administration is immature. Perhaps the proposal itself is mature, but if but for it to be accepted by the public, we first need dialogues and discussions. We have to go through the procedure. To forge consensus. If we can't reach consensus, we need to realize what our differences are. Otherwise, it may be just、um, a tiff. It may be a quibble that has departed. From facts and reason. When we look at collocation arrangements, and from what I've heard since last week, I realize that、uh, it is rather controversial, and、um, the, our differences in view is quite divergent. On one side, we have supporters saying that the XRL will enhance Hong Kong's competitiveness and help Hong Kong a lot. Those who are against. Feel that the setting up of a Hong Kong port area and the enforcement of maintenance laws violates the basic law. So these are all key issues we have to talk about, and we we have to、um, try to get around these issues. On the government's co-location proposal. Public views are divergent, and this has、um, led to、um, strongly opposite views, which could be detrimental. A responsible government should deal with this issue and clarify issues of contention. Apart from forcing the issue, can we spend some time clarifying clarifying these issues? I hope to、um, find out more from the government in a direct manner. Unfortunately, we have not had such opportunities. If incorrect information or misunderstanding are involved, whether、um, such misunderstandings or wrong information comes from the public or government, that had led to. A serious conflict, and this is completely unnecessary. So、um, we should all listen carefully, and we should spend more time listening, and we should try to identify sensible views. Some people feel that development is the only way to go, and the enhancement of、um, or shortening traveling time. Will help Hong Kong's economy and efficiency, and these people feel that the opposition camp is over worrying, and it would be all right so long as we abide by the relevant laws. But the opposition camp is not just. Exaggerating on their worries, and、um, would the XRL achieve the efficiency claimed by the government? And、um, can we get around the issue of legitimacy around the basic law issues? Would these issues require a serious response? The government said. Well, if these issues are not overcome, there's no way back in the future. So, shouldn't we listen more carefully? 
president eight years ago, the public was against the construction of the XRL, and eight years on, we saw a lot of deficiencies, and um, some data were found to be untrue. There have been um, budget and time overruns, etc. Back then, the government said co-location was not the only option, and um, the topic was open to discussion. So shouldn't they clarify such issues? It's been three months, and we are looking at this proposal, which is very different from what was touted in the past. So um, this requires further clarification. Then we can decide whether we will support the proposal or not. And um, currently, without consultation, there are strong um, conflicts among our society, and there would be negative consequences. So we have to clarify the matter before we decide whether to support or object to it. A lot of those in the legal sector and LegCo members feel that the government's proposal is a serious breach of the provisions and spirit of the basic law. This is a very dangerous precedent. Is this really the case? If this is true, would you be able to make up for it? with economic gains or um, reputation. Shouldn't we defend our very core values? All these would need to be clarified. Together with other issues, including proposals from the public, all these should be considered. For example, um, separate border clearance, the CIQ proposal, and that is Customs Immigration Quarantine. All these should be, I think this proposal should be ex explored, or um, onboard clearance or other proposals. I think we should look at these one by one. We can um, carry out a sensible comparison of different options in order to identify a plan that is most suitable and acceptable to Hong Kong people. The secretary said other, other options will not be considered. I think we should be fair and give every option a chance. And um, we should give the government time to explain different options, and ample time will be given to you to consider the issue. And um, the Hong Kong section of the XLL is easily um, accessible and connected with the mainland network. All this is just really the case. We should. Um, you have spoken for eight minutes, and you are the twenty-third member to speak. Whether you agree on Miss Claudia Mo's motion to adjourn proceedings, please be brief and focus on whether you support the motion to adjourn. If you want to discuss the pros and cons of co-location, you can leave that till later discussions. I have not touched upon that issue first, but I think we need to um, explore this issue. We are making a crucial decision at this juncture. Has the public had a chance to reflect their views? As proxies, are we allowing the public to um, offer their views?
for such an important decision? Um, have we really thought it through? The um, discussion is extremely polarized, and we have a lot of people supporting and objecting to the pro proposal. And um, such polarization of views is not good for Hong Kong. If we are to overcome this problem, we need to set aside more time for consultation. And during the consultation, we should pass on all relevant details to the public. And this is common in any democratic society in case of divergence, and this has been a long standing practice in Hong Kong. When we said that there is no democracy in Hong Kong, well, some of my friends say that Hong Kong has a kind of consultative democracy. Consultation is certainly important, but we are going to make a decision soon. So how can we carry out our consultation? A proper consultation can help forge consensus and understand differences. So uh, we should be serious in this. And it would also enhance the transparency and accountability of our decisions. And the public can see that we are tr able to rebuild trust. I'm not, um, we cannot say that um, such and such is the best plan and we should stick with it. This is a process of discussion and for the public to voice out. And this would achieve real political and social stability. This is a win win situation. Therefore, I see no rush in making a decision. And for such um, crucial decisions, we should first carry out in depth public consultation. As a representative of the education sector, I've been um, thinking how I should vote. How should I make my choice? And at the um, Professional Teachers Union, I collected views from teachers in order to know what they think. If we have more time, we can organize a forum to facilitate sensible discussions. If there's no need to make a decision now, by adjourning this motion, we would have ample time for the consultation. And um, this is not exclusive to the education sector. Other sectors and members from other constituencies, well, I think any responsible lawmaker would like to do that. Real discussions are based on real facts and the right understanding. And um, we are endorsed by the public, and this is the only way to ensure quality discussions. And at the end, uh, the decisions we made will be known by the public. And that is why we want to adjourn the discussion so that we can carry out proper consultation and the government is blameless. I think um, consultation work of different scales should be carried out. Thank you very much. Ms. Abram Shack. Madam President, I'd like to make a declaration. I'm an independent director of MTR. Uh, Madam President, as the debate on the Honorable Claudia's Mode's adjournment motion 
has dragged on for the second week. The public has seen the high-profile antics played by the opposition in the guise of discharging the duties of a legislator. This is repentant. If every legislator in this council exercises his or her duties like Claudia, abusing and manipulating with the rules of procedure in order to trot an agenda item for attaining their political goals, then businesses of this council will be brought into a stalemate to the detriment of the normal functioning of the legislature for acting in the best interest of the community, with over-politization taking priority over public interest in a wider sense. Everybody knows Claudia's most adjournment motion is meaningless, except for wasting our time in, in Let's Go to argue for superfluity's sake. This is for superfluous sake. Clearly, the opposition's plan to prevent the government motion on the collocation co arrangement of the Hong Kong section of the Guangzhou Samjian Hong Kong Express Rail, the, the collocation ar arrangement, from getting through this council by last week was unfortunately successful with the opposition's destructive tactics of making incessant quorum calls to give effect to the purpose of filibustering. Madam President, politics is an art of compromise. Very often, we have to agree to disagree. I'm sure that no issue put forward by the government for debate in this council will have the unanimous support of every member of the Council, not even among our pro-establishment members, nor members of the public. However, as legislators, we have to discharge our duties in the best interest of the public, taking a modern approach instead of going to extremes. Monitoring the government work is not equivalent to making the executive the legislature's enemy. Monitoring the government's work does not mean to have, an, to have to upset the government for the sake of doing it. Most important, monitoring the government's work does not mean unwarranted filibustering is justified. Madam President, I have no doubt that the co-location agreement is controversial is a controversial issue with one country, two system at stake. That's probably the reason why the administration has deferred the debates on the CSAs and the third reading of the stamp duty, Bill 2017. They should be thrown into the coffin, I mean the stamp duty, eh? and put this motion at the very top of the agenda of this council meeting on the 25th of October with a view of to allowing this council to debate on this controversial subject. Abiyats, the administration belated awareness of the need of a debate on the co-location arrangement and the fact that the nature of the government motion on the co-location arrangement is not legally binding. Because of the controversial nature of the co-location arrangement, an open and the debate is welcome, as members of this council can articulate their views freely, whether they support it or not. The opposition, too, can make use of the debate to express their concern. After all, they represent their, the people that voted them. Their concerns over the negative implications that co-location arrangement may have on the Constitution and one country, two system, which will be recorded in the hands out as an official record. Against this backdrop, I do not agree with the Honorable Helena Wong's suggestions of shelving the debate indefinitely till the government releases all the information requested by the opposition. This is unacceptable. The opposition can make such a request at the debate, and if the government fails to provide such information before the implementation of the co-location arrangement, history will do justice should anything go wrong 
with it sabotaging one country, two system, and this is not likely to happen, and impairing the interests of Hong Kong and Hong Kong people. Madam President, the Hong Kong section of the Guangzhou Samjan Hong Kong Express Rail Link is to be commissioned in 2018. We are running against the clock to prepare for its smooth implementation. Obviously, we need to cherish, cherish every opportunity given to this Council for expressing our views on this very subject. However, favorable or critical the comments will be. These views will be consolidated into a constructive criticism that the authority may draw reference to for their pending preparation work towards the commissioning of the express rail link. By so doing, we at least have done our job as far as reasonably practical on, practicable on the part of a legislator. If we discard such an opportunity, it is tantamount to a dereliction of duty, my dear fellow members. Interesting, the opposition members kept saying SAR government has a predetermined stance. Why not? And it has been extremely frugal with making arrangements for discussing the co-location arrangement. But the opposition is now rejecting a golden opportunity laid before them and shifting the focus on the subject merely to the political facet regardless of the social economic implications of the issue. This is sad and a shame for the opposition panic over the pop, uh, PRC's interfering into Hong Kong's internal affairs has swallowed their rationality. Franklin D. Roosevelt said, once said, the only thing, if I may quote, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself, unquote. The opposition acted rationally and don't let fear swallow your soul. The location of the rail terminal in West Kowloon and the co-location arrangement are irreversible. Facts for what being done is done. So any discussion based on this premise should be meaningful and worth pursuing. If the opposition cannot accept this premise, certainly there is no point of discussing the co-location arrangement, not to even speak of adjourning the debate. Nevertheless, dwelling on, our in, dwelling on the impossible dream of rejecting to accept the reality will get Hong Kong nowhere. Under the one country, two system, I still believe we can strive for an appropriate balance in the best interests of Hong Kong and the people of Hong Kong while maximizing the benefits to be brought by the express rail link. I know I have been there for a lot all these years because being a member of LegCo and MTR, we have worked very, very hard for the 2018 uh, opening. Should the co-location arrangement turn out to be overdone and unreasonable after its implementation, I do believe the people of Hong Kong will raise their objection. I trust in people of Hong Kong, don't you all? The opposition can. In this word, I oppose to Claudia's motion. Thank you, Madam President. Mr. Chen Han Pan, I speak against the uh, adjournment motion moved by Ms. Claudia Mo. The opposition camp has been abusing the rules of procedure and up to now, and they've been filibustering over the um, this motion. It's now the third week, and up to this minute, we haven't had the chance to debate on this motion. The um, opposition camp has been overbearing, and Mr. Eddie Ju said that because there is no uh, pro concrete provision in the bill, so we should not be discussing it here. What he said is misleading. We are going to embark on the three-step process. And we will be asking the MPCSC to authorize us to go through the three-step process and then the co-location arrangement. And that's the first step. And uh, after that, there will be local legislation. So by then, we would have the provisions of the bill. So you, how come that you are asking for the third step to be taken today? I think this is so very misleading. And Mrs. Uh, Mr. Yip Kuyun Yun said that there have been divergence of views and there is so much concern. So we 
um, he wants this to be discussed. But then this is exactly what we're doing. But he's left the chamber already. No, uh, not many opposition camp members uh, are here today. They de they are not willing to listen. They're just being overbearing. And the opposition camp members said that there has not been a chance for them to discuss. But then when they get to let go, they they are engaged in filibustering. They want uh, to abort the meetings and they want to discuss it at the um, subcommittee on railway, and they boycotted the visit to um, the XRL site. But then they asked for this uh, visit, such a visit at the Railway Subcommittee. So they are just uh, playing tricks on, on us, and they are swaying in their stance all the time. And I think uh, the motion itself represents a respect for the LegCo. After all, um, after so many years of hard efforts, no, we have come with, up with this option to implement co-location arrangement. So that's why the government has moved this motion, trying to listen to views from all sides. But then Ms. Claudia Mo has moved a motion to adjourn the debate. If you think you are so reasonable, why are you afraid of um, having this debate? Why are you trying every ways and means to stop the debate? So I think um, Hong Kong people are very discerning. They know exactly what the opposition camp is doing here. And in fact, even if the government is, has not uh, introduced uh, this motion to the LegCo, it has already been given the mandate uh, to go ahead with the plan. And uh, we discussed this at the House Committee meeting, and then on the 8th of August, we held a joint meeting of the three panels. And together with Mr. Jeffrey Lamb, I moved a motion which was passed, and that was to support the co location arrangement. That motion was passed. So, from my perspective, the government has already been authorized to go ahead. And I think this motion is. Is uh, uh, the it represents the respect the government is showing towards the electrical. Mr. Eddie G said that he's going to fight to the very end. Of course, we can fight against them for the public interest. But Mr. Eddie G, don't act so immaturely. Shouldn't the electrical uh, be having a compromise, or having a, a reasonable discussion here. I don't know where he's gone to. When he comes back, I think he should um, think carefully. We should be trying to convince the other side through rational argument. He should not be using the rules of procedures to abort the meeting and so on. It's it's um it's is a ha underhanded trick trick. So opposition camp, please think this through carefully. I um, speak against the motion, Mrs. Richard Yim. I speak in beh on behalf of the New People's Party against Ms. Claudia's adjournment motion. As what Mr. Charles Smock pointed out last week, since the reunification, um, there has been a constitutional convention, and that is when there are major policy initiatives um, upcoming, uh, a motion will be uh, moved um, f in the LegCo uh, for its discussion. And the first one is in May 1995 in relation to the NPCSC's interpretation in relation to the Mkaling case. And towards the end of 2000, well, some people were querying that the uh, public order ordinance was a a piece of draconian law. I myself moved a motion to debate on that. And in May 2002, when the government launched the political appointment system, Mr. Michael Sun soon also moved a motion on that subject. So um, these motions um, would allow uh, supporting and opposing views to be fully threshed out at the LegCo, so people could get a better understanding of these controversial issues. These are very valuable, very uh, good motions. So I don't think we should not debate on this co-location arrangement because there are um, questions related to this. 
on uh, legality. Now, at that time when we debated on the public ordinal ordinance, there were questions on the legal aspects as well. Now, after the debate, the issues got more uh, clearer. And I don't agree that um, in the absence of full consultation, the collocation arrangement should not be taken forward um, in full steam. I don't think that's the case. And I think uh, a lot of people are looking forward to the collocation arrangement because um, people a lot of people are traveling to the mainland. And since 2009, uh, when funding application was sought from the electrical, the debate, the issue has been debated all along and is now eight years down the road. I think the society has had all sorts of opportunities to, di to discuss the issue. And I think we should take uh, forward the matter speedily. And after this debate, the government should um, start the three-step process so that members of the public can enjoy the convenience of XRS as soon as possible. I speak against the motion. Dr. Ch uh, Chung Tai. Madam Deputy, of course I support the adjournment motion. I would even think that in 2017 in Hong Kong, if we are to discuss the XRO and the various options in relation to the ISQ, I think that is a step backward. And that's the main reason why I support the German motion. I don't know whether I'm right in um, using this phrase. There is a collective sort of a dementia case here. In 2010, in 2009, different sectors of the community and many people in Hong Kong raised their different views on the XRL. Uh, there were some criticisms. I recall that at uh, that time, Eva Zhang was the uh, relevant secretary, but now nobody was uh, referring to those issues now. Why did I say it's a, a sort of a, um, collective dementia on her part? Now, well, it's already 2.45, Madam Deputy. Well, I'll wait for them to leave the chamber before I call for quorum. Madam Deputy, call for quorum.
。鄭重泰議員。Dr. Chen Chong Tai。Madam Deputy。Excuse me for my、um, broken speech. I support the motion to adjourn proceedings, and I think we should go back to our argument seven or eight years ago why we stood against the co-location. I think we have regressed in the、um, seven or eight years after that. And、um, I have said that this is a form of collective dementia, so to speak. And I admit that I'm probably one of the patients. As to why I came up with this comment, this is not about any legal provisions or the、um, venue or method of construction of XRL. This is not about these things. I would say that the cause of such dementia is that、um, the discussions for co-location went against common sense for Hong Kong people. From an economic perspective, we know that the、um, XRL is three years behind schedule, and there is a budget overrun of 19.6 billion dollars. And、um, in March last year, we approved an additional. Funding, and after commissioning of the XRL, the government estimates eighty-seven billion dollars worth of direct economic benefit, but the budget overrun has accumulated to more than one hundred billion dollars. The relevant operating departments admit that the、um, future return of the project will only be four percent. The、um, operating profit must amount to at least eighty million dollars in order to achieve any kind of profit. So,、um, in the context of decades of prosperity, well, I I call this a collective dementia because we are indulging in a project which cannot be profitable. When even the operator tells you you have to make a profit of. Eighty million dollars per month, Mr. Stephen Howe. Do you have a point of order? What Dr. Cheng said about economic impacts have no、um, direct relation to this motion. You are the twenty seventh member to speak on this motion to adjourn. Please be concise and focus on whether you support the motion. I support. I I acknowledge.、Um, we should not have a discussion or debate among members. I've always been、um, talking about why the motion should be adjourned. I talked about the so-called collective dementia. So I have to talk about the economic impacts, returns, etc. It's obvious that these go against. Our long-standing success, success factors, and that is, we know that this project could not be profitable. I think I'm just staying to the topic. My point is that these、um, continuing such discussions will make us dumb. That's why by continuing the discussion. Um, the society would be even dumber. So these might be justified in the society today, which is sad to see. But、um, I was merely trying to elaborate what I said. Let me give another example. And、um, a nominal rent of one thousand dollars is charged, and.、Um, And the、um, period of rent would be fifty years. The current secretary Frank Chan said that the XRL will bring about two hundred seventy million dollars of or, or billion dollars of economic interest, and there would be indirect benefits if the、um, monthly operating 
revenue must be at least $80 million. How did you come up with those figures? The formula itself is um, nonsensical. So um, from an economic perspective, from a business perspective, this is um, not a profitable business and it was a mistake right from the start. And now um, you have proceeded so with the project, so what can you do? Are you going to quit or are you forced to continue? Obviously, the government is forcing Hong Kong people to continue with them and this would make us dumber in terms of economy. This is already a, a legal political discussion. And I would not um, even talk about the jurisprudence for such regression. Madam Deputy, if you are being politically correct, Hong Kong is um, part of the People's Republic of China. If Hong Kong is indeed a part of the People's Republic of China, why would um, there would be a mainland port area within Hong Kong's border? And um, the secretary said, if you call triple nine, the line will be diverted to the um, Public Security Bureau. Dr. Chang, you are talking about co-location. We have um, noted your your argument that some um, discussion will um, make people dumber. Well, there are different um, um, aspects to the discussion. If you dial triple nine, the line will be diverted to the um, Public Security Bureau of the mainland. So that's why I said this goes against common sense. Hong Kong has no death penalty. So um, if someone smuggles heroin in the mainland port area and subsequently someone calls the police, should the death penalty be enforced in Hong Kong or in, in the port area? Would that go against the basic law? If someone is caught in the mainland port area in Hong Kong and um, he was found to be smuggling and someone and there is a witness, so um, under one country, two systems, we do not practice the, the death penalty. But in the mainland, for um, the smugglers, a death penalty is likely. So should that person be sentenced to death? I know that this is um, perhaps to do with the jurisprudence. And um, when we talk about the co-location proposal, this is inevitable in the context of one country, two systems. So um, some members might want to discuss this. It's not that um, there's no scope for discussion, but when something goes against common logic and we continue the discussions, we will just regress. And um, this is not about regression of our economy or politics. It's about regression of the um, civilization or Hong Kong people. Hong Kong people has been hardworking and efficient. No one um, would engage in the losing business, but this is exactly where we are at now. So um, at some point, you should have cut your losses but now you are jeopardizing Hong Kong system and you are aggravating your mistakes and you are asking everyone to c come on board. And this will um, be beyond um, respite. I think you have been res repeating yourself. You are already discussing the pros and cons of co-location. You should now focus on whether you support the motion to adjourn. Madam Deputy, I agree. That's why I said that such discussions will um, make people more stupid. You know, I I am an example of that. 
because I should not be discussing those things. The um, XLL is just a um, high, just an average high-speed train, and uh, if you talk about express rail link, there are international standards. When I think about XLL, I thought about the um, Wenzhou incident, and um, there have been a lot of discussions already why this has been incorporated in Hong Kong. So are we talking about XLL or just the um, average high-speed train? There are already high-speed trains in Hong Ham. Why are we... Um, why do we want to jeopardize our one country, two systems? And the government has been um, boasting about the XLL. So why is there a need to um, continue to operate the um, Harmony train in Hong Ham? I think you have sidetracked. I will, I will not spend um, the whole 15 minutes. So um, my conclusion is this: for the subsequent motion, I will support. I will support it. Professor Joseph Lee, Madam Deputy, this is about Cap Four O. Or this is about um, Rule Forty One of the RLP, a German of. Motion after the council last week, I um, read a commentary and I looked at the um, entire motion. I like to um, read out this um, the wording of this government motion. According to the commentary, the government motion has never been about the XLL or or about co-location. It's about the three-step process. So um, I'd like to read out the motion. And the theme is taking forward the four tasks of the co-location arrangement at the West Kowloon Station of the Guangzhen Shenzhou Shenzhen Hong Kong Express Rail Link. I read the motion, and um, I see the government has been very direct. It was um, moved by the Secretary for Transport and Housing. Regarding the arrangement for conducting Hong Kong mainland customs, immigration quarantine procedures, or co-location arrangement at the West Kowloon Station of the Hong Kong section of the uh, Guangzhou Shenzhen Hong Kong Express Rail Link, this Council supports the government in taking forward the four tasks of the co-location arrangement pursuant to the three-step process proposal announced on 25th of July 2017 including reaching a cooperation arrangement with the mainland, seeking the approval and endorsement of the cooperation arrangement by the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress through a decision to be made by the Standing Committee, as well as commencing the local legislative process so as to meet the target of implementing the co-location arrangement as the West Kowloon Station about, upon the commissioning of the Hong Kong section of the XLL in the third quarter of 2018, with a view to fully unleashing the transport social and economic benefits of the home section of XRL and maximizing convenience to passengers. So all along, the government does not um, want to seek our approval on XRL or co-location. So they were merely respecting LETCO and um, they merely want to wanted to inform us that they are implementing a three-step process in um, taking forward co-location, and they were seeking our approval. So uh, Ms. Claudia Mo did not agree. I don't think there's any um, need for further discussion. According to what my colleagues told me, on the 26th of August, the chief executive said she respected LegCo. That's why um, she moved this motion at LegCo. If um, there is filibustering, since some time was limited, she would not rule out the possibility that the um, three steps would be um, invoked altogether. 
So、um, it was a move out of respect or courtesy. So、um, we have spent a, a term or even、um, and and this week in the debate, and the government wanted to see whether we approve the three-step process. If the government represents Hong Kong people. They are inv inviting the mainland authorities to rent out space, and we would give you space for clearings, customs, and quarantine. And it, it is asking Hong Kong people, is it okay? We、we'll、invite them to come and rent a piece of land in Hong Kong, and the way to do is to ask whether the MPSC SC will allow for that, and then after that, there will be local legislation. Up to today, we are not discussing the co-location arrangement at all. The Madam Deputy is right in pointing out that we should not be discussing this at juncture. Why are you asking us to do this? Why should we be spending so much time to debate this motion? So I support Miss Claudia Mo's motion to adjourn the debate. Fellow members are not very keen on discussing the three-step process itself, and、uh, the secretary is here. That was raised by、um, the secretary on the twenty-fifth of July, and this three-step process is that the mainland and the Hong Kong. Well, from the start up to now, you try to. Explain the government's motion and the three-step process. I think everybody is clear about that. Please focus on whether you support Miss Mo's motion. I think I I wonder whether you have listened up. I have said that I、um, support Miss Claudia Mo's、um, motion to adjourn the debate based on ROP forty bracket one. I have to explain why this motion doesn't need to be discussed here. Uh, of course, we we are going to be voted down on, and then we will discuss the content of the motion. But I must point out that what exactly the motion means, and why the motion doesn't need to be discussed here. So that's why Miss Mo's motion to adjourn the debate should be supported. I think my stance is clear. Well, Madam Deputy. Well, around to two or three p.m. we may doze off. Please try to listen up to me, and I will. I'm going to explain why I think I don't think the motion needs to be discussed. Now, three-step process. You will be inviting the mainland authorities to rent a plot in Hong Kong, so that's part of the three-step process. I don't think that needs to be discussed here. Why? Well, the three-step process is this: step one, the mainland and the SAR are to reach a cooperation arrangement. While the SARG is representing Hong Kong people, you will be discussing with the mainland authorities on the relevant arrangements. It's not up to the electoral to say yes or no. While the commentator said something interesting. Say if you well if you are in support of this move, well why don't you write to the SRG and tell you so? And there is no need to discuss it here. So we don't need to discuss step one. You are asking us about public opinion. Well, m some members have been disqualified, but then I think、um, the、uh, Pan Democratic members really represent the public public opinion. I think our stance is very clear, so there is no need to discuss here. Now, step two is to the、uh, the NPCSC approves and endorses the cooperation arrangement by making a decision that has nothing to do with us, whether we support or not.、Um, they are going to do it. And the secretary is doing it just,、um, well, just as a part of a procedure. And step three is about local legislation, and then the S A R O G will enact local legislation to implement the arrangement. So, is there a need to discuss this three-step process?、Um, whether it is necessary for the government to seek our support? I have reservation. Whether we support. 
or not support the SARG in taking this three-step process. It doesn't matter. All the government needs to do is to invite the central authorities to come and rent this plot, and then that's it. You will do it, irrespective of whether we give you our support. So why do we need to discuss it here? I don't get it. So Ms. Mo is good in moving this motion, and that is uh, to adjourn the debate. So that's how my logic works. Now, nine members have moved amendments to the government's motion. I will not be reading out all the motions here because that will be taking the whole 15 minutes. But then, well, the, they set these amendments center around um, several aspects, three-step process, co-location, arrangement. Well, all they are saying is that you haven't uh, conducted a public consultation. Shouldn't that be done? And also, um, they are against co-location arrangement too. They don't want co-location uh, arrangement as a way to do customs, immigration, and current arrangements. So we are against it. So there's no point in discussing it. So I think we should adjourn the, the debate here. Uh, as a teacher, a lecturer myself, I think my thinking is very clear. And also some members said that in relation to the co-location arrangement and the three-step process, well, they are breaching the basic law. And which provision of the basic law? Uh, articles 18, 22, and 20. And you haven't been able to explain yourself clearly. And some members also raise a point that it goes against one country, two systems principle. So for the amendments moved by the nine members, they are all on these four points. And these have nothing to do with the three-step process either. I might get a bit complicated. Maybe I am also suffering from dementia myself. And I really don't think there is a need to discuss this here. So why do we want to spend the time? Another thing, if the government wishes to get support from the LegCo, uh members who are, have popular mandate, uh, well, I am elected. I'm from the FC. As some consider this as a monster, but anyway, I got uh, many votes to get elected. And you want to um, solicit our support, but then you don't need to canvas support from us. Whether we support the three-step process or not, it doesn't matter. We don't need to discuss it here. So we don't need to discuss this. And why are we having a discussion here then? Maybe the government is trying to play some tricks here so we can we can talk about uh, co-location arrangement here. The government says the majority of Hong Kong people support co-location arrangement. For the uh, minority of us here, we can all set out our views and stands and ones uh, we have given you the opportunity to speak fully. Then uh, later, when we come back uh, with a piece of uh, bell, then you don't need to repeat what you said. And uh, we are going to tell you that co-location arrangement is very good, a good thing, and it's a good thing that we rent this uh, plot to an outsider to um, run the CIQ. So. Why do we have to discuss this motion at this juncture? I, I don't follow. So I follow, uh, I, I support Ms. Claudio Smo invoking ROP 40 bracket 1 to uh, adjourn the debate. The last thing that I want to say is, yes, we, Mrs. Carrie Lam's election campaign, she had the slogans, uh, we connect, we connect. So, We've spent so much time discussing this. And for the new term of government, uh, you have a term of over four years, and for us, two to three years uh, remaining in our term. So can we sit down and try to reconnect? Can that be done? We can discuss this three-step process at other occasions. We can reconnect. 
and then um, after that, after the reconnection, then you can proceed with the exile uh, uh, project, uh, connecting with Futan, Wenzhou, and so on. So I think uh, Mr. Lam Chakting is ready now. Mr. Lam Chakting, Madam Deputy, I'd like to thank Ms. Claudia Mo for moving this adjournment motion. Please allow me to respond to um, the comments made by Mr. Cheng, Dr. Chen Chung Tsai. I seldom um, listen to his full speech. I can't agree with him in saying that in discussing XRL and co-location, well, the society will get dumber um, as a whole. I will not agree to that. Well, um, government and legislators may have their own grounds. Some uh, think that their speeches come with wisdom. Uh, some others may be. Um, they have distorted arguments. What matters most that is those um, who are listening to these speeches should have the ability to tell right from wrong. Well, unless they have such ability, then um, well, would, then they, the society will will not uh, be getting dumber. Now, I listen very carefully to um, Mr. Abraham Sheikh's uh, speech. I respect him very much. And he mentioned many times that co-location arrangement um, is of great significance and serves uh, good public interest. I don't want to um, debate with him on the economic benefits of XRL. I don't think it's a, a right opportunity to deal with this now. But uh, economic benefits are assessed based on different assumptions. You can be optimistic or pessimistic. I'm not. A, I'm no expert in this area, and I can't say categorically that the co-location arrangement of XRL will. Uh, bring a lot or huge economic benefits to Hong Kong or uh, bring little benefits. Um, I, I can't uh, uh, say one way or another, but there is one public interest which has to be considered and which Mr. Abraham Sheck didn't mention, and that is about the rule of law in Hong Kong. Many fellow members have referred to Um, the fact that XRL will hurt the rule of law in Hong Kong. Can I quote Article 18 of the Basic Law, which sets out clearly that the laws enforced in the Hong Kong XRL shall be this law. The laws previously enforced in Hong Kong is provided for in Article 8 of this law and the laws enacted by the legislature of the region. National laws shall not be applied in the Hong Kong XRL except for those listed in Annex 3 to this law. The laws listed therein shall be applied locally by way of promulgation or legislation by the region. The Standing Committee of the National People's Congress may add or delete from the list of laws in Annex 3 after consulting its Committee for the Basic Law of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region and the Government of the Region. Laws listed in Annex 3 to this law shall be confined to those relating to defense and foreign affairs, as well as other matters outside the limits of the autonomy of the region as specified by this law. This provision is so very clearly written, and that is to say, generally, mainland laws shall not be applied in Hong Kong, except for those relating to defense and foreign affairs, as well as other matters outside the limits of the autonomy of the SAR. Now, for the collocation arrangement of XRL, of L, obviously, um, we are carving out a plot within Hong Kong territory where mainland laws will be applied. And this uh, blatantly contravenes Article 18 of the Basic Law. And the government's explanation is otherwise. He, they said they're, they're not looking at Article 18. Rather, they're looking at Article 20. And it goes like this. The Hong Kong SARL may enjoy other powers granted to it by the National People's Congress, the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress, or the Central People's Government. Well, uh, Mr. Lam, 
I think you are. Um, actually debating on the motion itself. So we're now dealing with the adjournment motion. So please come back to why you support or not support the adjournment motion. President, thank you for your reminder of the um, purpose of this adjournment motion. Why do I have to quote from the basic law? Because whether um, the motion moved by the LegCo is in line with the basic law is very key or critical. Well, it's said that uh, this is perfectly in line with the basic law, and I can say that it's a contravention of the basic law. That's why I have to cite articles in the basic law to prove my point. My point is that I support Ms. Claudia Mo's motion to adjourn. The explanation of the administration is to use Article 20, and I do think that is ludicrous. Under Article 20, it says that Hong Kong SAR may enjoy other powers granted to it. It doesn't say anything about Hong Kong SAR government using Article 20 to undermine the autonomy of Hong Kong. So the f what the administration proposes runs counter to the spirit of Article 20. If Article 20 can be used as the way they said, then they can use Article 20 to take away protections enshrined in other articles in of the basic law. So Article 20 will no longer be about powers granted to the Hong Kong SAR, but for the Hong Kong government to emasculate its power and to um, narrow down the degree of autonomy of Hong Kong. So if we are to debate on collocation arrangements, under Article 20, the motion itself contravenes the basic law and the legislature can not allow a motion that contravenes the basic law to be debated or even voted on. Some members said, well, you cite 18 and 20, articles 18 and 20, but there are precedents. Say, for example, Shenzhen Bay area and the, the Lok Ma Chow Loop area. Well, the Lok Ma, the Lok Ma Chow, the Shenzhen River was trained. So the area changed. It's different from West Kowloon Station. West Kowloon is definitely Hong Kong territory, which is very different from um, the River Loop. Shenzhen Bay area is completely different because Shenzhen Bay itself is mainland territory. So Hong Kong, the basic law of Hong Kong does not apply to Shenzhen Bay. If you say that, well, if um, Hong Kong side can set up facilities in Shenzhen Bay, then mainland authorities can set up base here in the West Kowloon Station. If it was said at the time when Shenzhen Bay Area arrangement was put in place that in the future um, mainland authorities can uh, operate a base here, then I might find that acceptable, but that hasn't been said in the first place. The administration has committed a serious flaw when it comes to procedure. They have been saying 
that uh, over the years there has been many in-depth discussions. The administration has considered all the possibilities and looked into different scenarios. Collocation is the only feasible alternative. The Secretary Frank Chan has some famous uh, words to give uh, people as well, saying that, well, it's sometimes best not to see each other, to turn down a request for them to attend a debate on collocation. Frank Chen may have divine wisdom. Uh, Mr. Porter has raised his hand. Mr. Te, we have heard many criticisms against uh, Mr. Frank Chen, especially those citing what he has said is rep repetitive. Mr. Lam, I have already reminded you once, this is a motion to adjourn. So you only have to uh, state your argument. You don't have to go into collocation. Well, perhaps you may ask Mr. Tse to clarify what he said. I think he is uh, citing Rule 45 of the Rules of Procedure. That is, if the president is of the view that um, a member persists in irrelevant or tedious repetition of his own or other members' argument in the debate, in the debate, he might um, direct the member to discontinue. But I haven't said that. I haven't repeated myself, and it's not tedious repetition. It's the first time I speak. Does it mean that um, if the f uh, the first member has covered all the points, then other members cannot? Say anything the same. Say, for example, if um, Ms. An Chan, Ms. An Chan has covered all the points, then no other members may speak. This will be outrageous. I act in accordance with the rules of procedure, and this is clearly stated in the rules of procedure. Of course, uh, President can exercise discretion. Please come back to the point. My argument is very clear. The way the administration handles the procedure is problematic. Before there is any co public consultation, the motion should not come to the let go for voting. And of course, I have to elaborate on why I think public consultation is inadequate. And you need to be patient to hear me out. Frank Chan, the secretary, said that he did not want to see university students, saying that sometimes it's better not to see uh, each other. With Mr. Chan's divine wisdom, well, can he explain to us why there will be prob why there will be problems with meeting with youngsters? And he previously said that youngsters buy cars because they want their souls to be free. I'm sure that with his logic, he will be able to connect with youngsters. Why would he refuse to connect with them? The administration said that they have considered all alternatives. That's why there is no need for further consultation. And on top of that, there has been abundant discussion in the community. After I became a legislator on a number of occasions in this subcommittee related to railway matters, I've asked the secretary whether there was uh, a decision made on collocation, but I was told that um, a decision has not been made, and they said that before the end of the term of the government, there would be an announcement. However, there wasn't one, and we had to wait till the beginning of the next government. There has never been discussion on the pros and cons of collocation 
and uh, how legal issues are to, are to be resolved. Now the gov now the administration said that they there has been discussions and they have considered everything. That's why there is no need for any consultation. If that goes in the future, the administration can simply say we have considered everything. We are omniscient. You don't have to say anything, and there is no need to consult. Is that really the case? Of course not. Mrs. Regina Ip used to be the secretary for secretary. Article 23 is very controversial. She repeatedly conducted public consultation. She was courageous. She did not get public um, support, yet she was brave enough to conduct public consultation, and she was humble, and she said, trust me, you will see. She did not say, I know it all, no need for consultation. I have considered everything. Mrs. Ip was uh, very decisive and very bold, yet she did not say that she knew everything. That's very humble of her. This is a major issue. There needs to be extensive, in-depth public consultation. Don't just rush it. Don't want to. Don't speed it up by skipping important procedures, and don't flout uh, a well-established procedure and system. Miss Tanya Chen, I do believe that I'm the last one to speak in the pandemic um, in the uh, pandemocratic camp. I attended most of the time to hear what the two sides. Uh, said because this is not an easy decision. I don't want to repeat what other members have said, so I'll focus on why I support Miss Claudia Mo's motion to adjourn. First of all, I'd like to take the opportunity to say something, Mrs. Virginia. It cited uh, three occasions uh, when something similar happened. The first time was a Nkaling case. If you had a chance to read through LegCo papers, then you would know why it came to the LegCo. That was before the interpretation of the law by the NPCSC, and at that time, the uh, Court of Final Appeal has already made a ruling. But I don't know if the administration at that time wanted to use the legislature as a rubber stamp, and that was 1999 in Jan in January 20th. A ruling was made, and the 19th of May of the same year, the Se Secretary for Security moved a motion to ask the NPCSC to in uh, for an interpretation. On the 28th of June, the NPCSC interpreted the law. That was the first uh, um, black attire march in the legal sector. I'm sure the Secretary for um, Justice remember it. I hope that we will have a rational discussion here. This is a motion to adjourn. A lot of members have said this. There has been a lot of discussion starting from the time when the XRL was first floated. We have received a lot of information since then. However, we feel that we have been um, cheated by the administration. Back in 2008, Mr. Wong Ting Kuang, moved a motion a month after the administration made the announcement of the XRL. It was a non-binding motion. At that time, the administration said in no uncertain terms that they would explore the, the feasibility of collocation, and at the same time, they would um, build in flexibility for separate locations. Fu Tian Long Hua Hu Moon 
Shebi on the mainland will also um, cater for the possibility of separate locations. The Secretary for Transport and Housing replied to Mr. Wang Tingguang's motion. And Eva Chang in the uh, F in the FC, well, Eva Chang uh, is an um, independent um, non-executive director of uh, of a large corporation. And in on August January twenty ten, um, she made some reply. There was a mention about the mainland. Um, Border control point of an area of uh, twenty-eight thousand square meters is not very often mentioned. On the sixteenth of January, twenty twelve, it was Mr. Y, the director for highways, uh, who is now um, U uh, URA um, CEO. According to Legco paper, well. I hope that um, some more questions will be asked. According to the government's papers, um, this time the uh, mainland port area would span more than 100,000 square meters. I understand that the um, platforms will be included, but I wonder if the trains would also be included. And um, this is also a legal issue which we have to talk about. According to Article 18 of the Basic Law, or, or rather Article 20, government wants to refer to Article 20 of the Basic Law and um, borrow the um, case of the Shenzhen Bay or Shenzhen Port area in the um, second reading. At the time, Mr. Li Xiu Kuang made a promise, and it was a very specific promise. At the um, Bills Committee, The um, only 16 meetings were held over 1.5 months, so it was a very speedy process. I hope the procession camp would also know what happened. At that time, the then um, Secretary for Security, I think it's time to make a quorum call, Madam Deputy or uh, President.
Chan Seo Chong, you. Ms. Chen Yeo Chen, President, I was on the Basic Law Article 22, and maybe I can read it out for everyone, because how, why Article 22 is related to the follow-up tasks, and why, and is related to why I support the adjournment motion, because the government is invoking Article 20 of the Basic Law to ask uh, the uh, CPG to do something. Now, the Hong Kong Special Administrator for Region may enjoy other powers granted to it by the National People's Congress, the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress, or the Central People's Government. When we worked on the Shenzhen Bay Port Model, we invoked that article as well. But at that time, at the Bills Committee, mem some members uh, raised their concerns on this, and they asked the then Secretary for uh, Security, Ambrose Lee, to uh, say uh, to clearly spell out the scope of Article 20. So, at the second reading on the 25th of April, 1997. In the uh, handset records, in page four or five four, there is this paragraph uh, saying that I must stress that in accordance with Basic Law Article Twenty, the SAR can get other powers from the CPG. When the SARG exercises such other powers, uh, must abide by the Basic Law. I must reiterate that uh, exercising that powers will not deprive any protection afforded by the basic law for the Hong Kong SAR. So this is an emphasis made by the then Secretary for Security. Why did I have to uh, highlight this? As I said, because that has everything to do with the follow-up tasks. And the, uh, However, this is exactly a point which is most bewildering to us, because the uh, Secretary then said that uh, our um, protection will not be eroded, but this time we are seeing the other way around. We will be, well, according to the step two of the three-step process, we will be seeking the NPCSE's uh, endorsement for the cooperation arrangement. But please note, well, this is a basic law um, that I'm holding for NPCSE's decision. If it carries the same weight, then I would like to tell you. The the map and of the territor territory of Hong Kong will is in the basic law. If you look at uh, instrument eleven, it's about the order of the State Council of the People's Republic of China, and that has to do with the setting the uh, boundary of the administrative. Division of the Hong Kong SAR, and that was promulgated in th on the 1st of July. Apart from narrative or uh, description, there is a also a map attached. So obviously, uh, West Kowloon falls within the territory of Hong Kong. But how come that the government can invoke Article 20 of the Basic Law to carve out a plot from the territory of Hong Kong? Well, that that uh, plot can be large or small. In size. So before the government explains itself clearly, we must pay heed to what's happening. Now, if you look at the electrical uh, brief, uh, the discussion paper, the 27 pager uh, submitted to the electrical, it says that it, at the uh, mainland port area, we don't have any power at all, but then we still have uh, some residual power, say, related to civil matters and so on. So if you have read through um, the uh, document, there are six exceptional areas. But don't think that this is uh, entirely the same as the Hong Kong port area in the Shenzhen uh, Bay port. I, I was having this um, piece of legislation relating to the Shenzhen port Bay uh, Shenzhen Bay, Bay port area. Well, it falls outside the territory of Hong Kong. So obviously, if we want to apply Hong Kong laws outside of Hong Kong, we need the decision or improvement, approval from the NPSCC, and we need also this piece of legislation. Well, the way it is, is simple, um, the way that was dealt with, it was, was, was uh, rather simple. Article 7 dealt with that, and that the courts could have uh, jurisdiction over civil, criminal, and other matters. Now, 
Mr. Kenneth Lang last time also explained fully his uh, concerns and questions. Um, whether these questions will be answered is in doubt. Now, um, the first step is we have to sign this cooperation arrangement, and for these six, six, six exceptional areas will be listed in the cooperation arrangement. But up to today, we have have no, we don't have a clue at all, except that the very brief description in the paper. I wonder whether the pro-establishment camp knows more. Now we talk about the uh, a German motion. This means that we are going to adjourn it today. It doesn't mean that we can't. Um, discuss it later. I hope that the pro-establishment camp can work together with us to obtain more information. Uh, once we were so down the river by the uh, government. Now uh, we were asked to approve $66.9 billion. The IRR is 6% and later on it's at 4%, the IRR. And the change has to do with the changes in the economic situation. But we've written to the government to uh, require further information, simple information. And in 2009, uh, some information was uh, given to us. We only want an update of the information given us to to us earlier. We're not making things difficult for the government. Even if we get the information, there is no way that we can block the commissioning of XRL. We will never um, overestimate our ability in that we can stop the commissioning of the XRL. And XRL's commissioning has to do with the construction project, whether there is on time, whether there is co-location or not, the XRL will be commissioned anyway. We just want to have more information. As pointed out by Mr. Abraham Sheck, he said the uh, history will um, do everyone justice. Even if we are being deceived by the government now, well, when that happens, perhaps I will already have passed away. So anyway, I hope that uh, we can get uh, information as soon as we can. And we have the verbatim record of the letter call today, and we have some FC papers. And <clears throat> information flows very freely today, but I still want clear records to be made on our debate today. Even if the government is not responding to this uh, German motion, I hope that they can still uh, respond after the main debate to allay public worries. Mr. Frank Chan said earlier in his response uh, to us, he said that we are unnecessarily concerned. And I think some of our concerns are really reasonable. And as a responsible and reasonable government, the government should try to give a good account of the matter. And I hope that the government can also make preparation um, that the uh, a judicial review case was dealt with uh, last month and also two months earlier, and that was not a final conclusion yet. And I, ho I believe that uh, Mr. Rimsky Yun is well aware of this. I don't know where it will end up uh, if the court uh, rules that collocation is going against the basic law. We will be seeking, say, the approval from the MPSC and then get it done. Um, will it be the last resort that you are thinking about? I hope that the government can think twice about this. When the uh, interpretation on the bit on by, made by the MPSC was uh, done f uh, for the fourth time, the um, Mr. Riskim Yun was very concerned too. So please don't lightly uh, seek interpretation from the MPSC. Does any member wish to speak? Does any public officer wish to speak? Ms. Claudia Mo, do you intend to apply? Reply, rather. Yes, I would like very much to reply. Well, the government speak nothing, anything that, that they can ram it through. Well, what I meant by adjourning the motion doesn't mean that we should not discuss it. We should stop, pause for a while, and then come back for a discussion later. Uh, why I raise this German motion? There are so many questions without an answer. 
I'm going to talk about economic benefits. I'm not going to debate with you on it. It's just that Mr. Frank Chan, the Secretary for Transport and Housing, he mentions about economic benefits. And he thought that by citing economic benefits, benefits he's already given you an answer. And uh, if that is the case, why are you still insisting on a German motion? We've been discussing about economic benefits of XRL. We've been putting it in, say, time-saving terms and passengers can great convenience in the next 50 years uh, well trans the benefits translated into money terms is 80 to 90 billion billion dollars they quoted the highest amount 90 million dollars time can mean uh, money of course but then he keeps on saying it continues to talk about a new job to be created and I think that is very far-fetched what, what are you talking about Robbery is considered an economic activity because we need police officers to investigate into the case. We need our insurance insurers to help us. So that is a far far fetched argument, and uh, he's also talking about the topside development, the commercial value of the topside development, and again, 50 years that translates into 90 billion dollars in economic benefits, and. When we build railway lines, we always say that upside development can help cross subsidize the construction cost of the railway. But the question is now if you, we don't have the XRL um, harbor front is a precious um, plot, and you can build uh, commercial buildings fetching a lot of returns. Well, Miss Claudia Mo, you have to. Um, um, make a reply on the adjournment motion, and you should not be going into the uh, specific points uh, in relation to the debate on ex uh, co-location arrangements. Uh, they haven't been be able to answer my question, and I'm trying to explain why they haven't been able to answer, because their answer is very ridiculous. They're trying to uh, put the benefits, say, in terms of the uh, value of commercial buildings, jobs created. So $90 billion times three, it means um, $270 billion. This is really going too far. And we still have so many queries. And that's a main reason why I move in a German. And he said that uh, XRO is going to be a transport hub. Yes, Hong Kong is an aviation hub. We are a marine uh, traffic or shipping hub, yes. But no, that should not be the case for our land transport. The uh, the the West Kowloon Station is the southern gateway to China. How come that all of a sudden it becomes a hub with connections in all directions? No, how you, can, it, can you lead it? Can it lead you to Taiwan, Japan? It's really uh, nonsensical. It doesn't uh, hold water. And, and he's presenting a lot of uh, figures. Uh, back then, when we visited MTRCL, I was given this booklet. It contained a lot of uh, data. And there have been delays, overspending, and so on. And the other day, I asked um, Mr. Frank Chang questions. He refused to answer. He said that there would be a patronage of uh, a passenger, uh, 100,000 passengers using the XRL every way. And, well, for every hour, there will be a patronage of 10,000 uh, passengers. So the government uh, is sounds very ambiguous coming up uh, with uh, these figures. So how can we debate on the government's motion? There are still a lot of unknowns. How can we have a debate? And there is another unanswered question. There's the four questions asked by the Citizen News. Back in 2008, the working group of the administration studied collocation arrangements, but none of the questions are answered. Professor Anthony Zhang said that uh, there must be uh, acceptance from the public and the public will be fully consulted. 
but you did not answer us as to whether there would be public consultation. You kept saying that uh, Li is the law. Previously, you said that uh, you would definitely not excise Hong Kong territory from Hong Kong. But now it's an excision. But they said that under the law, the port area will not be Hong Kong territory. So it is in line with the three-step process, full stop. Will a, re will a responsible government answer media inquiries in this way? There are loads of questions unanswered. I am very surprised. Back in 2008, when the working group was set up, I wonder, who are they? Do we have to wait for 30 years, 50 years for the Official Secrets Act to be lifted before we find the information? Is only a railway. But your conduct causes suspicion. You have been creating concern. And as a result, we are concerned. And then you turn around to say that these concerns are meaningless. And it was said that in 2014, the Hong Kong Macau Affairs Office has already decided that there would be collocation. In May or June last year, well, actually, it was the 30th of May last year, the councils, uh, the state council uh, delegations from Guangdong province came to Hong Kong to talk about the implementation of collocation. The wordings are huh, words to the effect to um, implement and to discuss the um, to discuss the implementation mechanism of collocation, but there was no press release. No public statements made. Professor Zheng said frankly that uh, we only facilitate because we have a Security Bureau, Department of Justice, and the uh, Constitutional Mainland Affairs Bureau. So don't tell me that the XRL is transportation only. If that is the case, you wouldn't have involved that many different bureaus. So you, you had known back then. Now it's like a shotgun uh, wedding that you have no alternative but to agree. So can we pause and think? Previously, I heard a very interesting idea. Of course, it's coming from someone who support my motion. It's from Mr. Eddie Chu. He said that uh, there was an occasion in the legislature when a motion is this. Uh, a motion may contravene the basic law, then it should not be discussed here yet. Sorry, I thought I heard some ruffling sound of a uh, plastic bag. Yes, someone was uh, messing with a plastic bag. Mr. Eddie Chu mentioned about the motion moved by Mr. Leung Kok Hong to end one party rule, and the president of the LegCo disagree. But no one says now that it's unconstitutional. The fact is that there are four individuals in Hong Kong applying for a judicial review. The court consolidated their cases. 
the code said that the executive council may agree to have collocation, but it is not a substantive power. So it's difficult for the court to say whether it is a contravention of the basic law or not. Martin Lee, SC, said that uh, when the three-step process has been completed, there can't be any judicial review anymore because an approval has already been given by the NPCSC. The Court of Hong Kong cannot challenge the decision of an NPCSC. Well, you need a permit to leave the city, but you have to obtain the permit outside the city. So it is a paradox, and that is another good reason why we need to adjourn. The court said that collocation in the end will be decided by LegCo through local legislation. So the court cannot guess or speculate what the NPCSC or the LegCo would do would do. So do you think the let do you think the NPCSC would refuse to approve? Do you think the LegCo will vote it down? They would like to get it endorsed as soon as possible before March because they are stooges, they are sycophants and they are toads. These lead questions on the law are not answered. In the end, I think they try to create a fait accompli, so our hands will be tied. They cited Article 20. Well, I've heard some a saying from youngsters. It's a... Uh, from youngsters, term coined by them, a small hole can bust a great dam. So that means uh, something small can destroy something humongous. How can we not worry? The Secretary for Justice said that um, this will not be done again for no reason. Well, it's all over the news when this Secretary will leave. There may be, an, there may be another one, and the other one, the other Secretary will say that we have reason now, so we'll do it again. This Secretary said that you have to trust me. Well... If you ask me to trust you, I naturally will worry. Trust is very important, but you have not done anything to earn my trust. Of course I'm worried. Cast your mind back a year ago. All of a sudden, they wanted to disqualify legislators. That was beyond my wildest imagination because previously we thought that it would never happen. But indeed, it did. So when it comes to what uh, the Secretary for Justice uh, will do, well, I have no hope. Article 20 said that the NPC may grant other powers, as that means we, need to, we would get more powers. But what happens is that uh, we... Uh, relinquish our powers and hand it over on a silver plate. Is, is it the case that I now give you the power to give your power back to me? This is illogical. Before I put the question to you on this motion, under Rule 40, bracket 2 and 
43 of the rules of procedure of the motion is agreed to the debate shall stand adjourned if the motion is negative this council shall continue to debate the motion relating to collocation and i'll put the question to you and that is that the debate be now adjourned will those in favor please raise their hands miss claudia mo claims the division the bell be rung for five minutes I uh I love you, Miss Starry Lee, I declare that uh, the accountant firm uh, I work for is the auditor of the home MTRCL, but I myself am not involved uh, with any of the work of the MTRCL. Hi, Sarah Himiu. Mr. Abraham Sheck, I declare, I have already declared that I am and uh, I an ED of the MTRCL, but this has nothing to do with the MTRCL because this is about collocation.
Party Bill Code. Voting begins. Please check your votes. Voting is closed. The results are displayed. From the functional constituencies, 34 present, 9 for 23 against, 1 abstention. From the geographical constituency, 28 present, 13 for 15 against, 0 abstention. The question is not agreed by majority, respectively, of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the motion negatived. We now can.